Hey guys, welcome to another video. So today I'm going to be talking about the things that you need to do during your A-levels in order to maximise your chances of getting into medical school. For those of you that don't know who I am, my name is Sam. Uh, I finished medical school about a month ago and I'm just waiting now to start my job as a foundation year one doctor in a few weeks time. So if you're somebody who's doing their A-levels right now and you wants to apply to medical school possibly in a few weeks time, then please keep watching. To keep your options open, you need to do at least biology, chemistry, physics and maths. This is going to allow you to apply to any medical school within the UK that you want to apply to. I appreciate that not everybody wants to do all the sciences and maths at A level. I didn't do all the sciences and maths at A level. But if you're somebody who wants to do medicine in the future, then you need to do at least two sciences, i.e. you need to do at least biology and chemistry. This is not going to um, this is not going to allow you to apply to any medical school within the UK, but it's going to allow you to apply to most medical schools within the UK. So just a word of warning, subjects like general studies and critical thinking are not widely acceptable as subjects to do at A-level for medical school applications. So I know for a fact that general studies is not considered by any medical school as a subject to do at um, A-level. And critical thinking is considered by some medical schools but not all medical schools. So my advice would be, yes, you can do general studies and critical thinking at AS level, but you need to drop those subjects for AT level, which is what I did. I did general studies um, at AS level, but I dropped it uh, during A2 to continue with my um, other subjects because there was no point continuing that as a subject because it wasn't going to be considered by any medical school that I applied to. In terms of the number of subjects to do at A level, you don't really need to do any more than the conventional number of subjects, so four AS levels and uh, three A2 levels. Um, if you're somebody who went to a grammar school like I did, then you're going to do five or more a AS levels and then four or more A2 levels. And the offer that you're going to get is going to be based on the number of subjects that you that you have. It doesn't really matter whether you have four or three, i.e. an applicant who has four A2 levels compared to an applicant who has three AT levels is no more better off. You know, the offer is going to be based on the subjects that you're offering and the subjects uh, and the grades that you're, gonna, that you're gonna get. So if you're somebody that did three a AT levels, you don't have to worry about doing four. If you just do the conventional number of subjects, then you're fine. Okay, so just like the GCSE level video that I posted uh, a few weeks ago, um, if you haven't watched it, then watch it. Um, it's in The link is in the description bar down below. But again, in terms of grades, there's no fuffing around. You need to have a set of good grades in order to apply to medical school at A-level. So the basic minimum that I suggest for you guys to have is at least three A's. Now, some medical schools now require you to have, you know, two A stars and an A, or an A star and two A's. So if you have at least three A's, that's gonna keep your options open, but obviously you need to get A stars and everything because that's gonna make you more competitive. As I said, applying to medical school is a really competitive thing, and currently there are probably about 15 applicants for every one place. So you really need to make sure that you're, you're good academically. If you're somebody that's sitting on B's and C's, then applying to medical school is going to be really difficult for you. But fear not, I'm going to do a video again covering applying to medical school if you haven't got the conventional grades. So keep a lookout for a video um, in the coming few days um, on this channel. Right, let's talk about other things besides grades. Now more than ever, it's really important that you have some exposure to the medical field. This is either shadowing a doctor or a junior doctor or whoever in, in a hospital or shadowing somebody in a GP surgery or spending some time in a nursing home or a children's home or whatever. You need to have some sort of exposure to the medical field so that you, you're able to write about it in your personal statement and also that you're able to talk about it during um, interview because you're going to be asked, you know, what sort of experience have you had in the medical field? What do you understand about being a doctor? What do you understand about working around ill people? And if you have something like work experience to talk about, then your life is going to be really easy because you're not going to be faffing around thinking about what sort of, you know, when you looked after your grandmother or something like that, which I will say is a good thing to talk about as well. If you have looked after somebody who's ill, you know, your dad, your mum or whoever, then you can talk about it if it's something that you feel passionate about. 
Right, so another thing that you need to do during your A-levels are the aptitude tests, which are the UK CAT and the BMAT. I can cover those in another video if you'd like me to, but um, it's been a while since I've done them, because as, as I've said, I finished medical school, so it's been at least six years since I since I did the UK CAT or the BMAT, so I'm a little bit rusty in that area. But if you'd like me to do some research and do a video about it, then please just let me know in the description bar down below and I can get to it. Personal statement, this is something that you're going to have to start working on early in uh, during your A-levels because you're going to draft it and you're going to draft it and you're going to draft it again and again and again and again until you're sick of reading it and then that's when it's going to be perfect. So start your personal statement early. If you guys want me to do something um, specific to personal statements then just let me know and I can, I can do it. But there's certain things obviously that you can write in the personal statement and things that you can't write in the personal statement. Something to bear in mind is that you know you don't do medicine just to save lives or just to help people. There's more to medicine than that. So if you have something like that in your personal statement, then, you know, it's not going to look good. Most people probably write about saving lives or wanting to help people, but, you know, you can help people being a bus driver. So anyway, if you want me to do um, a personal statement specific video, then let me know in, in the description bar down below and I can get to it for you. Okay, so in summary, these are the things that you need to be doing during your A-levels in order to maximise your chances of getting into medical school. Number one, my suggestion is to do at least two sciences and if you're doing two sciences, do at least biology and chemistry. If you're somebody that wants to maximise their chances of applying to any medical school within the UK, then you need to do biology, chemistry, physics and maths. Number two, you need to get good grades. There's no faffing around here, like I say. You need to have at least all A's in all the subjects that you're doing at A level. If you can get all A's, then perfect. But if you can get all A stars, then, you know, that is that is the best thing. <laughs> I'm like, so excited about getting all A stars. Isn't that a thing? Anyway. <laughs> Number three, get some work experience in the medical field. Apply to do work experience in a hospital or a GP surgery or a nursing home or a children's home or whatever. Anywhere that you can get exposure to, to medicine, anywhere that you can get exposure to doctors, talk to doctors and get some tips on you know what they suggest that you do in order to maximise um, your application as well. Number four, extracurricular activities. If you do extracurricular activities, then do them to as high a level as you can because that's going to show that you're a dedicated person, number one, and that you're a human being as well. Because medicine is not just about academia. You need to have, you know, some sort of life outside of medicine because it can get really depressing. <laughs> so if you can, um, you know, if you play a musical instrument, then by all means go and get get your grades in the musical instrument. Or if you play sport, then play for, for the school team, play for the county, play for the national team, or, you know, whatever. As far as you can push it, then it looks good on your application form. That's about it, peeps. Um, hopefully this video has been useful for you guys. Let me know in the comments section if you'd like me to answer anything more specific than this video has covered and you have any other general questions about medical school. Uh, for those of you guys that don't have the conventional grades, like I said, watch out for a video that I'm going to do um, in the next few days or few weeks. I don't know if I have time. <laughs> but I will cover um, how you can get into medical school if you don't have the conventional A-levels or the conventional GCSE grades. Alright guys, thanks very much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.